A few weeks ago, I started a series of devotionals on the psalm selections for each day of the week from the morning prayer section of the daily lectionary. The first of that set, set of devotionals focused on a series of psalms that are repeated each week. Then I started a series on a set of psalms that repeat every four weeks, and I read two of the four weeks worth of, devotion, of psalms during those devotionals. What I didn't read, though, is what I want to come back to now. This week, I'm going to return to the Psalms and read one of the weeks that we missed a few weeks back. And if you happen to use the daily lectionary to guide your daily prayers, the Psalms we'll read this week are the Psalms for this week in the daily lectionary. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Monday, September 22nd. 2024. Psalm 57, one of this morning's psalm selections for today, follows a familiar, well-worn pattern. The psalmist cries out to God for help, describing the situation of feeling set upon by personal enemies, and then giving thanks to God in anticipation for help that has not yet even arrived. The pattern is used so often that portions of the psalm are virtually identical to the opening verses of Psalm 108. But in spite of its well-worn pattern, it is still worthwhile to ponder the particular contours of this psalm. The first four verses lay out the cause for the psalmist's cry. According to the heading of the psalm, it is David's cry to God when he was hiding out in a cave, trying to evade Saul's henchmen. The psalmist writes, Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until the destroying storms pass by. I cry to God Most High, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame those who trample on me. God will send forth his steadfast love and his faithfulness. I lie down among lions that greedily devour human prey. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongues sharp swords. The psalmist's enemies have created what feels like a fierce storm. Against the howling winds and pounding rain, the psalmist takes refuge in God as a bird takes refuge under its mother's wings. The psalmist feels as though he has found himself in a lion's den, surrounded by those whose swords and spears and arrows are like teeth and claws of lions, just waiting to tear him apart and put an end to his life. In both cases, the psalmist asserts that his trust is in the God who will protect him against the violent storms and the circling lions. God will fulfill God's intentions for his life through God's steadfast love and faithfulness. The section ends with a refrain, Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. The second section returns briefly to the psalmist's trouble. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. Here the psalmist uses metaphors from hunting, setting snares to catch birds and digging pits to capture larger prey. But notice how it ends. The enemies have dug a pit to trap him, but they themselves have fallen into it. It is, a, is it a statement of what has happened already? Or is it prospective praise for what the psalmist believes God will do? No way to know, of course, but based on the pattern of this kind of psalm, it's probably the latter, an expectation of what God will do. The psalm ends with an extended hymn of praise, which is repeated almost verbatim in Psalm 108. He writes, My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul, awake, O harp and lyre. I, I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations for your steadfast love is as high as the heavens, your faithfulness extends to the clouds. The psalmist has enough confidence in God to commit his cause to God, certain 
that in spite of what is happening at the moment, God will act decisively to save him. Then he repeats that earlier refrain as a final exclamation point of praise. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Tomorrow, another psalm reflecting David's desperate flight to escape Saul's men. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.